This video will be about Russia's attempt to attack Berlin on the Eastern Front in 1914. In the summer of 1914, a conflict erupted between the Central Powers of Germany and Austria-Hungary against Britain, France, Russia and their allies. From St. Petersburg, it looks that the advantage is on its side. Russia and France have developed a plan to defeat the main member of the Central Powers, Germany. Both France and Russia border Germany. By launching a joint offensive against vital areas of Germany, these powers had a chance to bring Germany down. On the Eastern Front, the Russian forces prepare for the offensive. Their target is Berlin. The fall of Germany's capital could potentially coerce Germany into seeking peace. As Austria-Hungary cannot resist on its own, it would mean the victory in the war. But the road to Berlin is not simple. Not only does it entail moving deep into German territory, it also faces challenges from Central Powers forces in the north and south. Before advancing towards Berlin, Russia must neutralize these threats. Russia must deal with the danger coming from German East Prussia. Russia must occupy this territory and anchor its flank to the good defensive positions on the sea and the Vistula River. The other danger is coming from the Austro-Hungarian territory known as Galicia. Russia must occupy this region and seize the mountain passes. There it has to establish defensive positions which would safeguard Russia from any attack from that direction. After the danger to the flanks has been eliminated, Russia must regroup its forces to the center of the front. This repositioning will pave the way for the invasion of German territory, which would first entail advancing towards the Oder River and after that concentrating forces on Berlin and taking the city. As the war began in July of 1914, Russia initiated its plan. In the south, Russia concentrated 700,000 men against Austria-Hungary. They were opposed by 730 Austro-Hungarian soldiers in Galicia. The Austro-Hungarians were supported by the fortresses of Lemberg, Przemysl and Krakow. Both sides intended to go on the offensive. The operations commenced in late August. As the war began, the Austro-Hungarian forces pushed back the Russian forces and advanced north into Russian territory. Meanwhile, the Russians moved in from the east and captured the mostly undefended fortress of Lemberg. The Austro-Hungarians wanted to recover the situation by defeating the Russian forces in the east. They deployed their reserve forces to the east to launch a counterattack against the Russians. This had left the Austro-Hungarian center weak and vulnerable for Russian attack. The Russians had deployed four army corps to this area, which was opposed only by one Austro-Hungarian corps. While the Austro-Hungarians attempted to launch a counterattack towards the east, the Russians broke through the Austro-Hungarian forces in the center and outflanked their forces. This blow threw the Austro-Hungarians into disarray and they had to fall back. They retreated to a new defensive line on the Sun River. The Austro-Hungarians attempted to hold this line, but they were too disorganized to set up a proper defense. The Austro-Hungarians had to fall further back. They retreated into the Carpathian Mountains while leaving a sizable garrison in the fortress of Przemysl. On the new line, they were able to halt the Russian advance. During the operation, both sides had lost several hundred thousand soldiers dead, wounded and missing. By the middle of September, the Austro-Hungarians had 400,000 men left against 540,000 Russian soldiers, giving Russia a clear advantage on this part of the front. During that time, a battle was being fought in East Prussia between Russian and German forces. The Russians had a strong numerical advantage of more than two times. They had 500,000 men against the German army of 210,000. The goal of the Russians was to invade and occupy German East Prussia and the goal of the Germans was to defend it. The German army was much better organized for modern war than the Russian forces. The Russians had split their force in two armies, with one invading East Prussia from the south and the second from the east. The offensive was launched in the middle of August. In the beginning the Germans were unable to resist the numerically superior Russian forces and had to fall back. But soon the Russians made a mistake. 
They broadcasted their battle plans via radio and the Germans intercepted them. From that, they learned that in the near future, the Eastern Russian army would not pose a threat to the Germans and they decided to use this time to attack and destroy the Southern Russian army. One thing that gave the German army the advantage was that it could use the better German rail network to quickly transport its troops. They used the rail to quickly deploy most of their forces against the Southern Russian army. Even with this maneuver, the German forces were still outnumbered by this Russian army but the organization of the German army was much superior to the Russian forces. This enabled the Germans, despite being numerically inferior, to push the Russians back and encircle part of their forces. Part of the Russian southern army was taken prisoner and the rest of it was greatly weakened. It was not in a position to invade East Prussia anymore and the Germans could now deploy most of their troops against the Eastern Russian army. At the same time, the Eastern Russian army had advanced further, but now it fell back to a better defensive line. The Germans got some reinforcements from the Western Front and concentrated their troops against the Eastern Russian army. They now had a rough parody with the Russian forces. The Germans attacked, defeated the Eastern Russian army and by the middle of September pushed it out of German territory. The Russian invasion of East Prussia had failed completely. It cost the Russians 230,000 soldiers, while the Germans lost 40,000 men. By the end of September of 1914, the first part of the campaign is over. Russia has had success in Austria-Hungary. It has put the Austro-Hungarian army on the defensive and occupied part of the mountains. The southern flank can be considered secure. In the north, Russia has failed to occupy East Prussia, but the German army of 200,000 men is too weak to advance south and threaten Russian supply lines. Russia had also a numerical advantage of 1,050,000 men against the Central Powers 800,000. It is safe to begin the offensive towards Berlin. For this, Russia would need to have its forces in position. Russia wants to concentrate half of its forces, roughly 500,000 men in the central part of the front. This means that it would have to temporarily pull away part of its forces from the front line. Meanwhile, the Central Powers did not know of Russia's plan. They were emboldened by their success in East Prussia and now they hope to defeat the Russian forces on the southern part of the front. Both Germany and Austria-Hungary deployed their forces to that area. By the end of September, they had gathered a German-Austria-Hungarian force of 735,000 men. Meanwhile, 265,000 Russians had remained on this part of the front, while 500,000 were gathering east of the Vistula River further away from the front line. The first objective of the Central Powers was reaching the Vistula and Sand Rivers. The offensive was launched at the end of September. In the center, the Central Powers forces encountered little opposition and quickly reached the Vistula River where they encountered the main Russian force. The Austro-Hungarian forces in the south met much stronger resistance and they were only able to reach the Sun River. By the middle of October, Russian forces had stopped the Central Powers behind the Sun and Vistula Rivers. By that time, both sides had around the similar size of forces but Russia had gathered more than half of its forces against the Central Power's weak northern flank. The largest concentration was around Warsaw, where Russia had more than 10 army corps against just a couple of German army corps. This force was a great danger to the weak Central Power's northern flank. Russia now proceeded to roll up the Central Power's flank from north to south. The Russians attacked and outflanked the German forces in the north. This forced the Germans to retreat to avoid encirclement and they created a new defensive line further west. The Russians then broke through the Austro-Hungarian lines and outflanked the Austro-Hungarian forces further east. The Austro-Hungarians could not resist on these positions and fell back west, where they established another defensive line in the Carpathians and near the fortress of Krakow. There they were able to stop the Russians by the end of October. In the north, the Russian forces had more than two times their numerical superiority over the Germans in East Prussia, giving them an advantage. This allowed the Russians to launch another invasion and re-establish a foothold in German territory. 
early November 1914. The Russian forces have pushed the Central Powers back from the Vistula River towards the German border and are in position for an attack into German territory. Russia also has a significant numerical advantage. After suffering losses during the October battles, the Russians have one million men on the front line. The Central Powers have not been able to fully recover from the losses and have only 565,000 men to oppose them. The next step of the Russian plan is clear. Their main force would attack the weaker Central Powers forces and move into German territory. The Central Powers want to avoid an invasion of Germany and are deploying large reinforcements to this area. Meanwhile, the Central Powers hope to thwart the Russian invasion by using their smaller forces to launch attacks on the flanks of the Russian forces. One attack being carried out by German and the other by Austro-Hungarian forces. The Germans used their superior rail network to move their troops quickly in position for the attack. They gathered more than half of their force against the flank of the Russian advance. Their plan was to encircle part of the Russian forces. The Germans attacked in the middle of November. They put part of the Russian forces in the danger of being encircled. Russia had to abandon the invasion of Germany and send large reinforcements to prevent its troops from being cut off. Eventually, it was able to fight the Germans into a stalemate, but the losses were heavy. The Russians lost 310,000 men, while the Germans lost 120,000. On the front against Austria-Hungary, the Russian forces went on the offensive. The Austro-Hungarians were able to hold on to their positions and when the Russians were weakened by their losses, went on a counter-offensive and by the middle of December were able to regain part of the previously lost territory. On this part of the front, the Russians lost another 300,000 men, while the Austro-Hungarians lost 240,000. These events meant the end for the Russian advance towards Berlin. The combined Russian losses for this phase of combat were 660,000 men, while the Central Powers lost more than 360,000 soldiers. The lower losses allowed the Central Powers to strengthen their forces. By the end of the battle, Russia had 720,000 men on this part of the front against the Central Powers force of 670,000 men. With these numbers, the balance of power now slightly favored the Central Powers. Russian forces had to go on the defensive and fell back to a better position in the central part of the front. Russia had to abort its plans to occupy Berlin and it would never make another attempt during this war. This was the last major development on the Eastern Front in 1914. The termination of the Russian attack towards Berlin marked the final failure of Russia's and France's plan to win the war by invading Germany. France's attempt to carry out its part had to be aborted early in the war when the Germans outflanked the French by attacking France through Belgium. Now the front lines remained static. Both sides searched for new strategies to win the war and these would lead to more battles on the Eastern Front in 1915. But that is a topic for another video. If it's ready, you're gonna watch it here. The making of this video has been possible due to the generosity of the patrons of the Eastery channel, whose contribution has helped me to take the time to make proper research for the video. Thank you for your support.